In the headlines, Presidential Election Tribunal begins sitting in Abuja. Code of Conduct Tribunal asked President-elect, Governors-elect and others to submit assets declaration forms before May 29. Aircraft carrying 143 passengers crash lands in Abuja following tire bust as Nigeria Safety Investigation Board and Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority set to investigate cause. An under foreign scene dead toll from Democratic Republic of Congo floods rises to 401 as government declares Monday National Day of Mourning. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Ayuba Ile. Thanks for joining. And now the details. The Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal, Abuja, has begun proceedings in the petitions challenging the outcome of the February 25 presidential election. The Independent National Electoral Commission had declared Bola Tinubu of the ruling All Progressives Congress polled 8,794,726 votes to win the election. The panel is presided over by Justice Haruna Simon Zamani with Justices Steve, uh, Stephen Ada, uh, Bolaji Yusuf, Moses Ugo and Abba, Moh Abba Mohammed as members. Bola Tinubu legal team is led by Wole Olani Pegu, SAN, while Chris Uche, SAN, leads Atiku Abubakar's team. Peter Obi's team is led by Levi Uzoku, SAN. Balarabi Mahmoud, SAN, is the lead counsel for Independent National Electoral Commission, AB Mahmoud, SAN. Atiku, is, uh, Atiku in his 66 page petition, is praying the tribunal to declare him winner of the poor or order a fresh election. On his part, Obi, in his petition, is also praying the tribunal to nullify Tinubu's election. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Meanwhile, the Code of Conduct Bureau has asked the President-elect Bola Tinubu, the Vice President-elect Kashim Shetima, and 28 incoming governors to declare their assets before May 29 inauguration. Senators-elect and reps-elect are also expected to declare their assets before June 5, when they will be sworn in. Spokesperson of the Bureau, Veronica Cato, has said that asset declaration was an integral part of the swearing-in ceremony, according to the law, adding that several elected officials had started picking their assets declaration forms at the CCB state offices nationwide and that they were expected to submit the filed copies to the Bureau before the inauguration day. The promise by the President-elect Bola Tinubu to give workers living wage and improve their standard of living is viewed as possible morale booster for the workforce. In this report, Kabir Lawal speaks to civil servants in Abuja on what the promise means to the workers. The report. The President-elect Bola Tinubu had in a solidarity message on Workers' Day promised more than living wage for workers to have a decent life and provide for their families. For these civil servants, it is cheering news and looking forward to May 29th when he will assume office. They however called on government to deploy price control mechanism to address rising inflation in the country. It's a good news for the for the workers. Uh, at least they will have uh, a very large package to take home. You know, and I hope that uh, our marketers will not uh, destroy the goodwill of Bola Ahmed Tinebu. You know, whenever there is an increase in price, 
then the marketers will also increase the, the goods, you know, the commodities prices will go high in the market. So I don't know, maybe government will, will, will have to do something about this, about markets as in price control. It's a very nice idea because we workers, we are suffering at a long line. If they give you small salary, if you go market now, you buy some things huh? before you buy before you buy everything now your money don't finish so you cannot get anything now talk a lot of to pay your children's school fees and the other things so it's a very good idea that is what you are framing for some believe the outgoing administration wasted the opportunity to improve workers welfare through many unfulfilled promises which made public service unattractive they have been promising us we are not seeing the promises so if it came to be as a change to others, let's see. It is actually a good news for government. To increase workers' salary, it means money will flow in the market. Well, it's a good news for government to increase workers' salary. It means money will flow in the market, and people will be happy doing their businesses. But the only advice for the government is how to control the price mechanism of the market so that the inflation will not tell more on the citizens of the country. By the grace of God, this president can work. All the promise we promise us, by the grace of God, we get hope. Say, he must make sure saying do us the thing we support to be for our country. They advise the incoming government to fulfill the promise and regulate prices of commodities such that salary increase will no longer trigger inflation. Kabir Lawal, Trust TV News, Abuja. There was panic Sunday evening following the emergency landing of a Boeing 77 aircraft belonging to Max Air at the runway of the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. The aircraft blocked the runway for many hours. The emergency landing around 2.50 p.m., according to officials of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, was due to bust tire suffered by the aircraft. The officials said that other aircraft could not land at the runway because airplane forcing fan to close it for some hours. The official said that since the aircraft made the emergency landing, the airport authority and other agencies, despite the heavy downpour, doubled efforts to evacuate the passengers and their luggage. However, the airport, which was closed, was reopened for flights at 8.50 p.m. after the incident, aircraft was removed around 8.30 uh, p.m. Uh, now, the facility cleared and certified for flight uh, by NCAA inspectors. Confirming the incident, Acting General Manager, Corporate Affairs Fan, Faithful Hope Ibaze, uh, said that the authorities scaled up efforts to ensure the runway was put to use as soon as the Max Air aircraft was removed. The Nigeria Safety Investigation Board and the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority have expressed readiness to conduct a thorough investigation on the causes of Max aircraft tire bust. The NCAA Director General, Captain Musa Nuhu, said in a statement issued on Monday in Abuja that the outcome of the investigation will help the agencies to make appropriate recommendations to prevent any reoccurrence of such incident. The NCAA boss affirmed that Abuja Airport was shut down due to the disabled aircraft on the runway, as Namdi Azikwe International Airport is a single runway airport. Nuhu stated that a notice to airmen was issued by NAMA accordingly. According to him, the runway was inspected and swept for damage and debris by officials of the NCAA, Federal Airport Authority, and the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, after which the runway was declared safe. Farmers in Sharawa community, Dora, local government area of Katsina State, are going through hard times as a result of the collapse of the Dabiram solar irrigation system. According to the farmers, the project under the supervision of the National Agricultural and Development Authority has been abandoned for two years. To make matters worse, security guards looking after the equipment at the site are complaining that they have not been paid salaries in 18 months. Gaza Yakubu, report. 
Dabiram Solar Irrigation System is one of the dam projects in Daura local government area of Katsina State, supplying water to farming communities around its access. But the sudden collapse of its solar irrigation system has created a huge challenge to farmers relying on the project. The major problems the farmers are faced with are drying up of the water body feeding the irrigation scheme due to climate change and influx of farmers into irrigation farming. A equal huge obstacle is the breakdown of solar energy system, which was provided by the government for over two years. These difficulties have increased farming costs, especially as the farmers have to adopt the alternative use of water pumping machine to supply water to their farms. Solar is of paramount importance and it makes work faster. It has helped the less privileged. We are calling on government to pay security personnel guarding the solar because for the past 18 months they have not been paid. Abdullahi Adamu and his brothers are constructing water canals as an alternative means of irrigation. They will have to use a pumping machine instead of solar that was provided by the government as a source of energy. Last year, the weather really affected the solar as a result of the wind and thunderstorms. We have to create path for easy flowing of water to ease in the farmland. Unlike farmers in Kurakanu State benefiting from the Khadija Jamarin River Basin Development Authority, farmers in Sharawa, one of the communities benefiting from the solar irrigation system, cannot produce crop in three farming seasons. The challenges of irrigation in this region have overshadowed their farming capacity. We are calling on the government to build underground water pipe to further boost farming production in this community and it will also help us during the dry season. The farmers in Sharawa community say their only source of income is farming. And now that the dam is going through multiple challenges, they can only hope that the government will come to their rescue. Gaza Yakubu, Trust Television News, Daura. Three people have been confirmed to death with 271 households displaced following a heavy downpour in Laba Kuka community in Gujba, local government area of Yobe State. Yobe State Emergency Management Agency revealed this on Sunday. The agency noted that its flood response team, along with council representing Mutai Ward and community leaders, jointly addressed the area to ascertain level of damage caused. According to the state humanitarian agency, the deceased have since been buried while the injured ones were referred to neighboring hospitals in Bajoga, Gombe State for medical attention. The agency further noted that it has tasked Gujba local government authority to prioritize provision of water as well as basic primary health care in response to the plight of the displaced persons. SEMA assured to continue with its local government level stakeholders engagement for seasonal flood mitigation and prevention in line with NIMED and NEMA early warning signs. You're watching the news update on Trust TV coming up shortly. We'll take a look at wisdom behind fear of fake new narrow notes. Details and more after the break. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, a total volume of more than 30... It returned a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe. How secure that they? You can see security men with blood. This is the road leading up to the... For Libya, if you look at England squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their name. You are not looking at
Welcome back. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Here is a look at the top stories once again. Presidential Election Tribunal begins sitting in Abuja. Code of Conduct Tribunal asks President-elect, Governors-elect and others to submit assets declaration forms before May 29. To some more stories, traders selling uniforms, books and other educational materials are lamenting low patronage even as schools resume for third term in Kaduna State. Parents, however, attribute the situation to the economic challenges in the country. Trust TV's Bello Musa reports. School resumption always comes with demands on parents to provide for their children things like books, uniforms, shoes, school bags, and many others are almost always needed. Some parents in Kaduna speak on their experience. The parents have faced a lot of problems. Sometimes uh, you go to some rest house, they don't even have food to eat. Don't to pay school for their children. And that's not a competition from the government. Or does the government contribute anything to the parents? No. When the children resume school is that we have the issues and challenges of getting new textbooks, new exercise books, but above all, the pressure of uh, paying school fees, which comes directly from the school. That has always been the major challenge because most parents don't get prepared with the school fees on ground. But for traders who sell books, uniforms and other materials, patronage is not encouraging now as they recorded more sales during the previous terms. Few people came to buy. Besides, this is third term, and we don't record much sales this term. There is no patronage. Only those who either lose their books or change school location patronizes. To parents, the economic situation in the country makes it difficult for some of them to cater for the school needs of their children. When you the parents, I mean, you, the parents you, you, don't, you don't eat enough in your house. How can you feed your children? Eh? <laughs> you are not satisfied with the food you are eating in the house. And that have means, that have another alternative. Even the children trying to force you to get new shoes, new sandals, and new uniforms and the rest, so many things. Pocket money given daily to students is another challenge parents struggle to cope with as school resume nationwide. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Now, business owners and point of sale operators say that the tendency of the circulation of fake new narrow notes is high because of its scarcity in the circulation, urging the government to allow continuous use of the old narrow notes. The report. People with criminal inclinations are trying to exploit the non-availability of the new Naira note to circulate fake currency as most people cannot differentiate between real notes and fake notes. Some point of sale operators in Lagos air their views on the low circulation of the new Naira notes. They should keep the new notes. They should not bring out the new note. The old note is okay. And even the new note, if rain fall on the, the new note is spoiled, you should turn to another color. So, you don't need the new notes for now, just new old notes. Affecting my business is not really affecting my business and because I know the rudiments of the business. The second one is, um, um, for the future, I think it's better because we have a lot of fake of the previous one. Four days ago, they brought for 5,000 naira to me to exchange of the fake one. So I think that is one of the reasons um, our government wants it out of the market system. That's one of the points. Then they have ever, every other, several other um, reasons too. So affecting my business is not. Everybody knows the rudiments of their business, so they know how to keep it up. There is no business that doesn't have their own ups and downs. So you should know how to paddle your canoe when it comes to your business. They urge the government to prevent further punishment of Nigerians come December 2023 by ensuring that the newly redesigned Naira notes become available.
I fear now is that if they stop using the the old drug now, it will affect business and ordinary. Then by before they could stop the old one, they should make sure that they have produced more so that it will be enough. This new Naira note, we are not seeing it and we are not getting the new Naira note. So my opinion is that let us continue with the old one because that old one is circulating everywhere. The new one, we cannot get in it. However, business owners are advised to educate themselves on how to differentiate original Naira notes, especially the new notes, from the fake ones, so as not to fall victims of fraud stars with fake new Naira notes. Rich cultural display by a kingmaker and Sarikin Yaikin Bochi Emirate, Ali Yakubu, who is also the district head of Lembe, entertained many spectators during the traditional Hawa Mamma Kusu staged in his domain. The monarch charged his people to pursue education as a veritable tool for nation building. Trust TV's Adam Muima witnessed the annual festival and fastened the report. The occasion thrilled the heart and minds of spectators to remember the late first Sir Kinyak Mbauchi Mala Mahamadu Mamman Kusu, who first initiated the Daba. The current district head of Lame, Aliyu Yakubu, organized the annual Daba to promote peaceful coexistence, unity, and cultural development to remember the legacies left behind by the first Sir Kinyak Mbauchi Mamman Kusu, a war veteran during the reign of Shehum Usman Danfordio. <laughs> Our subjects are very obedient. That is why I have been telling them they should continue to exhibit good behavior whenever they go. Though they welcome visitors, that is why the district was filled to capacity. They should be good ambassadors of Lemi. They should love one another. That is the way to go as human beings. Spectators were fascinated by cultural display by various troops, with hunters giving them a treat with several gunshots in the air. Traditional leaders as well as Gumo indigenous people commended the Sarikinyaki of Bauchi for his peace-setting role for others to follow to promote peace in the domain. Uh, I wish, uh, I think it's, uh, I'm short of words to express my feelings. I know it is existing, but I had never for once ever visited. But for, I am invited by the Sarikinyaki of Bauchi, a friend, a brother, the district had thanked the state governor Bala Mohammed for his tremendous support for annual Maman Kusu Daba, saying it served as a symbol of unity and togetherness for the people of Lame district and some part of the northeastern state. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. And on the foreign scene, the death toll from flooding that hit two villages in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo last week has risen to 401, Provincial Governor Tio Ngwadbije Kasi said on Monday. Torrential rain in Kalehe territory in South Kivu province caused rivers to overflow on Thursday, inundating the villages of Bushushu and Yamukubi. At least 176 people were reported dead on Friday and many more missing as humanitarian workers recovered scores of bodies. Kasi told Reuters by message on Monday that the death toll now stood at 401. He did not provide any other details. The central government has sent a delegation to Kalehe and declared Monday a day of national mourning. And in sports news, Nigeria's Flying Eagles have arrived in Argentina's capital, Buenos Aires, for a 10-day camping program ahead of this year's FIFA on the 20 World Cup finals. 20 players and 10 officials landed in the South American country on Sunday night for the training tour. 
AC Milan midfielder Victor Eletu linked up with the contingent on their arrival in Buenos Aires. Now, Flying Eagles are expected to engage in series of friendlies while in the city ahead of the World Cup. Lada and Boso's side are drawn in Group D with four-time winners Brazil, Italy and debutants the Dominican Republic for the World Cup. Their first two games will hold in Mendoza in the far west of Argentina against the Dominican Republic on 21 May and against Italy on 24th of May before they fly to La Plata to play Brazil on 27th of May. The Flying Eagles have made it to the final of the competition twice in the past. The 2023 Under-20 World Cup will be staged in Argentina from May 20 to June 11. And that's it for the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ila. Thanks for watching.